Blockchain and cryptocurrency are without a doubt world-changing technologies. If you've ever used a blockchain-based application before, then you've witnessed the power of this. But if you're honest with yourself, you still might have a little bit of skepticism, thinking that you know some of these apps have a long way to go before they're ready for mass adoption. You're thinking like, hey, not everybody's going to sign up for a cryptocurrency exchange in order to use an app. Maybe not everybody's going to install a wallet like MetaMask before they start interacting with these applications. Well, in this video, I want to talk about an answer to some of those problems and one particular project that's launching that can fix some of that and also blaze the trail for other projects to do the same long term. I want to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis and also a crypto holder myself. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So like I was just saying, if you've used any blockchain technology, then you've seen this stuff is incredibly powerful. Okay, you can get benefits with this technology that you can't get somewhere else. And that's one of the things that made blockchain technology take off in the first place are the use cases itself. So let's start off with the first major use case that most people can think of, which is cryptocurrency. So one of the reasons people cryptocurrency is so powerful, uh, of course, it's a borderless peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system, right? It's not controlled by any government. It's decentralized. Those are amazing benefits. But probably the biggest benefit that draws in people to cryptocurrency initially is really financial speculation. You can get massive gains with cryptocurrency that's hard to replicate anywhere else. So that's the use case. Same thing with decentralized finance or DeFi. One of the most popular use cases is high yield savings. You can get returns and in interest rates, maybe 10% plus on stable coins. And that's incredibly hard to do with any other financial product in the traditional financial system. So those are two major use cases. So contrast that to user experience, which I was talking about at the beginning of this video. You know, you're saying this is incredibly powerful technology, but hey, you know, the user experience is kind of clunky. Some of these apps are really slow. Like who's going to go to a cryptocurrency exchange and buy crypto before they can even use an application? Who's going to install a browser extension wallet before they can interact with an app like this? Well, that's the user experience side of things. And ultimately, in order for this technology to, you know, take off and reach mass adoption, we need to provide these benefits first and foremost, number one, like I was talking about a second ago, basically the, the use cases. But then we also really need to improve the user experience in order to spread that adoption to lots and lots more people. And so right now I wanna talk about a project who's doing that and I think has a really big lead in this space and can actually blaze the trail for other projects to do this and create more crypto app that can be widely adopted. So this app is Compound Finance, which is going to launch a DeFi treasury for institutions. So I talked about this briefly in my live streams that I do on this channel Monday through Friday. You can just turn on notifications, subscribe to the channel down below. You'll find out about those whenever we go live. But I wanna make this standalone video to talk about this and why this is such a big deal why you need to pay attention to this. So let's talk about what the app does. So we'll start off with regular compound finance. Okay, so this is a savings and lending app where you can deposit cryptocurrency on one side and take out loans on the other. It works a lot like a bank in this case, okay? So the cool thing about compound is that you can deposit stable cryptocurrencies like DAI, for example, and USDC and earn competitive interest rates compared to you know, traditional finance. Now these interest rates go up and down over time. I've seen them as high as you know 10% plus. Right now the interest rates are a little bit lower because there's less demand for stable coin borrowing. And I imagine lots of people are, are parked in stable coins right now because the cryptocurrency markets are down from their all time highs. But even at these low points, like these interest rates on cash are essentially better than traditional finance. I mean, if I was going to put you know money in my bank account, I get like a fraction of a percent of interest and this is still higher. So I've talked many times on this channel about how I think savings and lending is a killer app for blockchain technology because it's a use case that most people can understand and they can, earn the, they can understand the benefit of high yield savings compared to what they have now because more people hold cash and savings accounts than they do maybe like invest in stocks, for example. And Compound is a leader in this space. And I remember actually when I saw Compound for the first time in 2019 and it was a huge aha moment because we had smart contracts and we were trying to figure out what can we do with these things. And people have been talking about DeFi. We'd implemented projects like MakerDAO. But when I actually saw Compound for the first time, it was a huge you know, light bulb that this is where all this space was headed and this was the future. And so enter in Compound's institutional product. So why is this important? Well, if you're going to use Compound right now, then essentially you still have to install a MetaMask wallet, a browser extension. You have to buy cryptocurrency on an exchange like Coinbase or Binance, transfer it into your wallet, and then start inter interacting with Compound that way. Okay. So going back to the debate I was talking about a minute ago, these are great benefits and people will jump through these hoops uh, to be early adopters. But for more people to use this, let's say the average Joe, for example, or maybe even your grandmother, then we kind of need to add a layer on top of this to make it more accessible. 
Um, and that's why they're launching compound uh, finances, uh, DeFi treasury for institutions. Now, what does this do? Well, the long and short of it is basically clients simply need to transfer USD into their compound treasury account and instantly gain access to interest rates of 4%. And so you can see here, this is orders of magnitude higher than any high street bank and offer on dollar savings accounts. All right, so what does this do and why is it important? Well, basically it takes compound, which we showed here on the screen a minute ago, the decentralized side of things, DeFi, all right, powered by smart contracts, we can get all these benefits. And then it adds this layer on top for, for traditional finance to actually interface with it without using DeFi. Okay. And I've talked about a ton on this channel about how one of the ways that blockchain technology can really spread to the masses is where you can create a an app where people don't actually know that they're using blockchain on the back end, or they don't have to know that they're using blockchain on the back end uh, in order to get the benefits of blockchain technology. Okay, of course, if you tell people to install a MetaMask extension and buy cryptocurrency before they use it, they have to know they're using blockchain because no other apps work this way. But if you can create a traditional financial uh, interface like this that hooks into a decentralized back end, you can still reap the benefits of things like high yield savings and present them to people, you know, inside of an application to a format they're familiar with. So so in the case of compound treasury, they can just put dollars in and they can get 4% on dollars for their treasuries to serve institutional clients this way without having them actually hook up to a smart contract directly with decentralized finance. And what kind of benefit are they getting? Well, they're getting that high yield, which is only really possible with smart contracts in this way. One of the ways that smart contracts are able to do this is they automate the lending and borrowing process where people can take out loans the other side. And you have these smart contracts that cut out all the middlemen. So the contract is just code. There aren't a bunch of people that are like, you know, trying to issue these loans, people can just take them out permissionlessly. And that's one of the ways they're able to present these higher savings rates. Now, I've seen a lot of people already push back on this and say, hey, this is not very decentralized, is it, right? Just having a user interface that holds people's money, that's kind of the antithesis of blockchain in the first place. So well, my answer to this is that basically it's okay to have something like this coupled with blockchain technology because ultimately it's letting people use blockchain on the back end, but provide them a benefit, which is this third party custodian that can stand in the middle and charge some sort of fee. And why this is good is it actually lets more money use DeFi and it still lets other people participate in decentralized finance directly. So what I mean by that is if Compound's launching an institutional product to bring traditional finance into the game, they could potentially bring billions and billions and billions of dollars into DeFi uh, through this custodian service that normally wouldn't use smart contracts. And then you bring all this extra liquidity and funding into the space. And this is good as long as normal users or anybody who wants to can still interact with decentralized finance directly without this traditional finance layer. So, you know, if we had some sort of regulations come into play that said, hey, you have to use some sort of centralized custodian in order to interact with DeFi, that would be a bad thing. But as long as people still have the option to choose whichever way they want to, they can get this convenience of using a traditional finance interface like an online bank, for example. But if they want to, you know, get their hands dirty and use decentralized finance by going through all those UX hoops, like I talked about before, like installing MetaMask, buying cryptocurrency on an exchange, they can get these benefits of doing self-custody and interacting with the DeFi protocols directly. So the whole point is, here, we create this decentralized financial infrastructure for people to interact with it however they want to and build whatever they want to. It's really just infrastructure. You can do with it whatever you want to at the end of the day. If you want to build some sort of centralized custodian on top of it, that's fine. As long as other people can still have the freedom to use it as they see fit. And so one reason I think this project is also really important is because Compound's been a leader in this space from day one, okay? Compound was one of their first projects to do this savings and lending, like I talked about. Remember, I saw this in 2019. It was like, boom, like this is where this entire space is headed. And since then, we've seen lots of other savings and lending apps come out. We've seen Aave hit the scene and a lot more. And also, Compound was a pretty big leader in the liquidity mining incentives that we've seen. So if you've heard about yield farming and people basically like depositing money into blockchain-based applications or DeFi apps in order to earn like brand new tokens just for free, Compound was an early leader in that space too. And so, you know, they have a pretty strong reputation for setting trends. And I think that they're in a pretty good position to actually write the playbook for how other people can bridge traditional finance into DeFi and actually marry the two to get these types of benefits that I'm talking about. And so let me tell you a couple other ways that I think I can see this going. We'll start off with the application I'm talking about now. So this is basically an institutional product that's bringing traditional finance into decentralized finance. One of the reasons I think this is so important is because if you can bring uh, basically institutions in, you can bring a lot of money at one time. And they already speak the language of finance. So it's kind of a no brainer to focus 
focus on them because it's more money. They kind of get it already. It's less education. But I can definitely see this expanding to consumers like the average Joe, you know, in multiple ways. So the first one is just with straight up online banking. So basically, you know, people are already familiar with the format of online banking where they have a website where they just access their bank account, they log in, they can transfer funds in. But like I was saying earlier, you know, most online banks have horrible interest rates, you know, way less than 1%. I mean, I've seen some things that are like advertising, you know, high yield of like 1% or something like that. But I could see a situation where, you know, we start having new online banks hit the scene that do this type of thing where you can, you know, incentivize new users to deposit money into their accounts. And that cash never actually gets converted into crypto. They could just keep it in cash in their account. But on the back end, they can do DeFi just like we're talking about with this institutional product here. And if new banks start coming out that do that, then I can see that putting pressure on traditional banks to basically do the same thing and start integrating DeFi into their, you know, existing infrastructure as well. And it's these type of dominoes that can fall over and over one by one that can actually help push this technology towards mass adoption. At the end of the day, it's about competition. If blockchain technology can provide benefits that the traditional financial system can't and more people demand it, then there's going to be powerful incentives for people to basically jump on the train or they get left in the dust. The other way I can see this playing out is with mobile apps. So I've always said that, you know, in order for DeFi to really go mainstream for consumers, then it needs better mobile integration. And so we've seen a, an explosion of, you know, mobile participation in finance. We've seen a bunch of apps like, you know, Robinhood and Weeble come out that let people, you know, participate in finance with a few clicks on their phone. We've seen in popularity of online bank accounts come out where you can manage all your transactions and your budgeting on your phone. In a very similar way, I think that uh, crypto and DeFi can really take off with mobile adoption as well. Let's say that you have, you know, Apple Pay or Android Pay already installed in your phone. So your your phone is basically already aware of a, a funding source. Then you could just download a mobile app on your phone and a few clicks of a button, take some funds out of your account. It's in the app and you can start participating in DeFi that way. You know, in, in this case that we're talking about, you could earn a competitive savings rate on your funds in just a matter of minutes. And in addition to that, you know, while Compound might be writing the playbook on how you can do this and hook it into decentralized finance, this can open up to a variety of DeFi use cases. So, you know, if these online banks, you know, offer you ways to basically have higher savings rate on your cash and maybe some of these mobile apps, then these apps can still bridge into other DeFi use cases like purchasing crypto assets. But those would be cases where the user kind of has to clearly understand they're getting off into blockchain territory. Whereas if you stay in just the cash territory, then they don't even have to know that blockchain's happening on the back end. So we could see some apps, you know, stay clearly in that lane. And we could see some apps, you know, being more future forward and, and having a combination of both. But either way, that's the trajectory that I can see all this stuff headed in. I think Compound, like I said, is a huge leader in this space that this institutional product is a big deal for bringing traditional finance into the system. It's a big deal for establishing this new pattern of doing traditional finance interfaces where people don't actually have to custody cryptocurrency directly and use those protocols directly. I think it's a good thing that we people have this option whether they want to do it this way or they want to interact with blockchain technology directly through the, the means that a lot of you watching this channel are familiar with. At the end of the day, as long as we have an option, the more options, the better, in my opinion. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, you want to get started today, uh, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step by step for start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.